secret location in the city that moves mountains. Greetings. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick as and I'm all out of bubblegum. Hello. Simon says hello. There you go. There you go. Welcome in, everyone, here to Chew Bubblegum. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you guys for uh, being in here with me, Dirty Dan and Simon, and helping me put on a show for our listening audience and supplying them with oodles of ear candy. As long as they use a good Q-tip. <laughs> uh, so, we got a big snowstorm coming back through again. Are you guys excited about that? No. Yay. Me neither. Me neither. I'm, I am i don't like cold weather. I don't like snow. Uh, one of the main reasons I don't like snow and cold weather is because we have a lot of power outages in eastern Kentucky. And that makes it extremely difficult, you know, when your power goes out. I mean, now that I'm more of a South Central... And I can see the the electric pole. I mean, if it goes out, I'm putting it back on. <laughs> <laughs> what if the transformer blows, though? Well, good thing there ain't no transformer here. That's out for the next house. You know, honestly, and uh, we we'll talk about this more later. I've always wondered for the last couple of years, especially in larger cities in Kentucky, and I'm sure they do in some, but especially our area. Why do they not have our power lines underground? I know it would be an expensive project to do that, but that would stop a lot of power outages if they were underground in our area, in eastern Kentucky. So I actually know the answer to that because I dealt with the same thing up in PA, and I had a lot of lineman friends, and I asked them. And be it that the Appalachians are all shale, um, shale is a very fractal rock. Right. And... Unfortunately, it's very unstable. So if you bury it underground, you literally have to entomb it in a sarcophagus the entire way it's underground. Because otherwise, any time a raindrop falls and goes into that ground and this, the shale decides to crack and pop and move, it'll cut power there. Okay. But it still looks like it would be cheaper to do that than, than getting these guys at these uh, contract companies to come out and cut trees and then all the overtime. It looks like in the long run, have you ever, if we have had you ever our utilities underground. Equipment? What's that? Have you ever tried to rent heavy equipment? No, of course not. It's a lot cheaper to do it this way than it is on the ground. Really? Well, mm -hmm. you know, I, I just think we would have less power outages if it's about our power was 80 underground. It's percent cheaper. Okay. It's 80% cheaper the way that it is? Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Now, all right, you from PA, and I know that they do have a lot of underground power lines in PA. Um, well, you live there. You're not from there. You're from Germany. I'm sorry. Thank you. I'm sorry. Uh, did you guys have a lot of power outages in PA? All the time. Okay. Really? Every Everybody normally had a generator or two as a backup. Okay. I had two myself. My parents had a big old one. All of our neighbors had them. I, heck, I had to run and pick them up for most of our neighbors, actually, because oh. I was the only one with the truck. Well, okay. Well, we'll go ahead and jump into email. Simon, you go first this week. All right. This is uh, from Taylor. Hello, Goose, Dirty Dan, and Simon. Do you know what Betty White's views on UFOs and aliens life from a... <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're, nah, you're, but, you're, you're doing fine, brother. I'll read it again. I can't see where... I gotta get my phone closer to me. I'm supposed to be wearing glasses. <laughs> there's there's All nothing right. wrong with that. This is uh from Taylor. Hello, Goose, Dirty Dan, and Simon. Do you know what Betty White's views on UFOs and alien life from a where? I think they meant I alien believe. life form. Oh, they put from on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, they did. Shame from on you, where. Taylor. From a where I looked <laughs> on. I've, I've looked online and can't find anything, Roswell. All right, Dirty Dan. Before yeah. anything's answered, yeah. I would just like to say, for all you listeners that also listen to the podcast, I get my butt royally chewed out and ridiculed okay. by okay. Goose and okay. Rebecca. No, 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 no. But now here, no, no, no. goes, no. shame on you, Taylor. That's it. That's all I said was shame on you. I do not continue to read it to make the person feel really bad. 
I read it the way they were intended. So uh, to answer that question, does anyone know what Betty White's views on UFOs and alien life forms were? I have no clue. Dirty Dan? Uh, the one time I heard her say with Fallon that, oh, yeah, there's aliens. They're already here. And that was it. Well, Simon, how about you? Uh, no, I don't know much about Betty White besides she was in the Golden Girls. Yep. And uh, you do know that uh, her her aunt, Betty, was Betty Crocker. Did you know that? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> got you, got you. Uh, the next email is from Jay Beck. Greetings, I come in peace. Hey, guys, I hope that this email finds you well. Uh, I saw on the news that you guys had a recent snowstorm. I'm like Goose, and I'm not a fan of cold weather and uh, winter. My question is... What is something that you've learned about through the show that still blows your mind? Take care and stay away. Stay safe, my Roswell family. Dude, I have worked so much at the cookie factory. My eyes are going together. Take care and stay safe, my Roswell family. Thank you very much, Jay Beck, for writing in. Uh, I'll answer that first. For me, it's Antarctica. I mean, I knew there was some stuff about Antarctica before we started doing the show, before I started researching it, but there is so much more that I had no clue. You know, it's, it's the same thing. Every time I look or read up on it, whether it be the same thing or something else, I still find out more information. Simon, what about you? What's something that you've uh, uh, become intrigued about since joining us here and doing research and stuff? Well, uh, last week I found out what a solar flare was. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, yeah, definitely, definitely. That's a, that's a very good answer. Very good answer. Uh, <laughs> Dirty Dan, you want to take the next email there? Yeah. So we have Stephanie writing in. It says, hello, all. I've been doing some research and believe I have concrete, irrefutable proof that I have found a genuine time traveler. I'm not going to give you the name of who I believe is a time traveler at this time due to fear of ridicule. If you had genuine, unquestionable proof of the same, would you share that information or keep it a secret? Simon, what do you think? Well, uh, as a podcast host, I would definitely uh, try to get some views and have them on my podcast and see if they would do it. You you want me to go? I, I think I would keep it secret if I knew without a shadow of a doubt. And I would try to form a friendship and contract, contact that person and find out stuff and set up a relationship with that person and try to do better humanity. You know, not, not change things because we've talked about that before on the show, but try to do better for humanity with knowledge and stuff they told me. What about you, Dirty Dan? I mean, if I was in her shoes, I'd send us the, the name. And knowing that we would be respectful enough to keep it anonymous if she asked for that. Um, Cause I would also like to do my research on that. Uh, and you know, I'd be thankful for a platform like us to, to help. Definitely. Definitely. You know, there's, we have, we have one writer, uh, firewater that uh-huh. has shared a lot of information with me. Yes. Yes, we have. And I have not put it on the air um, just due to respect for him and an, uh, an enemy with, with what he shared. And because I'm also not so comfortable um, with, with sharing some of the stuff just because I don't know about it yet. So I don't want to talk out of my place. Um, and, and of course, with the stuff I have shared, I've, I've asked him, hey, is it okay if I say this? Um, and when he says yes, absolutely. When he says no, I don't. But he's only said yes. And even still, some of that stuff then I'm, I'm still a little reserved on. So, right. um, Stephanie, if you if you want to send it to me or us, um, I know I and I'm sure Goose and, and Simon will happily look into it um, and see if we can help you out. Uh, but we don't we don't have to share the name. No, definitely definitely not. And uh, I do want to make a plea right now. We had a listener named Adam, I think from Virginia. He wrote two emails last yes. year. Yes. And uh, his grandfather worked in NASA, and he was mm-hmm. supposed to visit his his house. Uh, last summer, um, Adam, if uh, you're listening to this show, or and I'll mention this again on the podcast show, yeah. uh, please write back in. Uh, 
you know, because I, I have emailed Adam, I have reached back out and emailed him. I've got I've not got a reply. So Adam, please, you know, email us back because I would like to get an update because the last time that he wrote in, um, and for those of you who have no clue what I'm talking about, I'll just give you, Adam wrote in once the first time and said that his grandfather worked for NASA and his grandfather told him um, when he was later on in life that the moon landing never happened. Uh, well, that they actually did land on the moon, but what they found and saw made them leave immediately. And um, Adam's grandfather sadly passed away, and he was supposed to go to his house and go through some of his stuff to see if he could find any more information. That was his second email that he sent maybe a few weeks after the first one. We've since not heard from Adam. So, Adam, if you're out there, please contact us and reach back out to us. Hopefully he's okay. Yes, definitely. Simon, the next one's yours. And if you guys do not recognize this username, I'll tell you exactly who that guy is. Laser. Okay. Leisure Suit Larry. Leisure Suit Larry. Leisure Suit Larry, yeah. Yeah. Leisure Suit Larry. Hello, everyone. New listener and first time writing in. A few of mine turned me in, on to your show. Fascinating subjects, great discussions, and quality production production value. My hat's off to you. Now on to my question. What is something you can't love without? <laughs> you can't love without. Uh, I think he meant live. Um, I'm going to, well, I mean, to answer it first, you can't love if you don't have a heart. And something I can't live without is oxygen and air. Uh, Dirty Dan, what about you? I mean, well, are are we going to answer the love without or live without? I don't know. Just just answer them both the way that I did. What what uh, something I can't live without? Ooh, this show's went off the rails this week. <laughs> it, it does every week. I don't know what you're talking about, Goose. Um, honestly. I can't live without interaction. Okay. With with either animals or people, just some sort of interaction because I get into a lot of arguments when I just interact with myself. Right. Okay. Well, what is something that you can't live without? No, that was live without. Okay. What is something you can't love without? Yeah, yeah, we'll just we'll just <laughs> All right, Simon, Simon, we will we will we will go on to you there, Simon. Oh man, uh Definitely can't live without my family, for sure, man. That's a good answer. That's a good answer. Uh, thank you very much, Leisure Suit Larry, for writing in. And for bonus points, do you guys know where the name Leisure Suit Larry came from? That is nope. an, that is an old-school video game that they actually remade uh, in the mid-2000s. And uh, you'll just have to research Leisure Suit Larry. That's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, Planet X says, hey, guys, I hope that the new year is treating you well. It's been a while since I've sent an email in. I just wanted to let you know that I'm still here and listening faithfully. Roswell, thank you very much, Planet X, for writing in. And Dirty Dan, you have, I think, the longest email that's ever been written in. Wilson writing in says, what is the last item that you bought online? A. Okay. You bought hay online? No, it says A. Yeah. Okay. Like, I don't know if that was like an initial. Okay. See, mine mine didn't have that. Oh, then it must have been from you. So, yeah, the A must have been from me accidentally. So. All right. Well, Wilson has written in, uh, what is the last <laughs> item you bought from the internet? Online. Told you, man, we went off the rails. Simon, what's the last thing you bought online? That's uh, appropriate for radio. <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably a video game. I think it was Red Dead Redemption Two. Oh, there you go. What What did you think about Red Dead Redemption Two? Now, see, I never knew you were a fan, sir. Uh, I used to spend a lot of time in Valentine myself. I know I it's know a heck of a of download. Means. Yes, it is. Dirty Dan was the last. Oh, did you already answer what was the last thing you bought online? No, okay. I just I don't know what any of that means you're talking about. Okay. Well, Red Dead Redemption 2 is a really good PS4 game where you're in Old West, and it's just awesome. It's like the best game ever. 
you 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 you've heard of uh, Grand Theft Auto, right? Yes, yes. All right. This is like Grand Theft Auto in the old west, but the graphics and story and what you can do is so much better than Grand Theft Auto. I think the last thing that I bought online was uh, was probably some audio equipment. So, Dirty last Dan. Last thing. Yes, the last the thing you last bought online. Thing I bought online. Oh, he's actually pulling his phone out, Simon, to look, to make sure. I am. But does like an app count or actually on an online store? No, an app can count. Okay. Well, the last thing I bought then uh, was a new French press for Rebecca. What is a French press? Is that like As some way she makes coffee? I don't know. Oh, okay. I was I, I thought it was fake fingernails for a minute. But uh, the last thing I actually bought online was registration for a vehicle. <laughs> There you go. There you go. Uh, I want to thank everyone for uh, sending us an email. Sorry we butchered some of your emails this week. It's been a long week for me. Uh, I know it's been a long week for Dirty Dan, Simon. I don't. I don't even know what you do during the day, Simon. But I'm going to take up and say it's been a long week for you too. Um, you can always call, text, and leave a voicemail for the show. Keep it clean. We'll play it on a show. 606-373-3396. That's 606-373-3396. Or they can email. How can they do that, Dirty Dan? You can email goose at here to chew bubblegum.com. Dirty Dan at here to chew bubblegum.com. Rebecca at here to chew bubblegum.com. Though she's not so much a radio personality. You can email them the show at here to chew bubblegum at yahoo.com. And does Simon have an email yet? Uh, Simon does not have an email yet. I, I know I've said that for three weeks now. Simon will soon. Simon, I apologize. Uh, I am not a procrastinator. I just stay so busy. I need an assistant. If uh, you know anybody's out there wants to work for free and do. Uh, uh, before I say that, I actually did update the website earlier in the week. So, Holy smokes! Yes, and uh, it was last updated in September. But I did update that earlier in the week, so you are welcome. Listen, but, uh, I'll be your assistant as long as the uniform can be really, really small Daisy Dukes and a cutoff wife beater. No, no. I have bad eyesight, but not that bad. Uh, so, But uh, we're going to take a short break. We'll be back in, uh, with segment one. And we also have this week part two of the Mysterious Appalachian Mountains with Seth. He has part two coming up. And by special request, a classic throwback episode of Elliot's Articles will also be featured in this show. You're listening to Here to Chew Bubblegum. We'll be back in just a moment. I've got a gun. And I've got my pills Behind the door The page reveals Words in red They do not fail Beyond the sun Hey ladies and gentlemen, this is Elliot from the Spooky Family Podcast and I want to remind you that our buddy, the Paranormal Trucker, has a brand new podcast out. Yes, you can catch the Paranormal Trucker and his crew, Snowman and Large Marge, anytime on YouTube. They're going to bring you spooky tales from the road, ghost stories, updates on new tech, conspiracy theories, and everyone's open road favorite, unidentified aerial phenomenon. Be sure and tell them Large Marge sent ya.
researching the inner workings of the net to bring you stories of the strange and unusual. It's Elliot's articles on Here to Chew Bubblegum. Take it away, Elliot. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Elliot with Elliot's articles on the Here to Chew Bubblegum podcast. Now, on the podcast, we've talked about some crazy things. We've talked about government conspiracies. We've talked about Bigfoot. We've even talked about aliens and flying saucers. But Kentucky is known for, well, some other strange events. And the strangest of the strange events, in my opinion, is the Great Kentucky Meat Shower. Now, today we're going to be looking at a Scientific American article written by Beck Crew on December 1st, 2014. In it, he talks about the Great Kentucky Meat Shower. Now, what exactly was it? Well, on March 3rd, 1876, large hunks of flesh fell from the sky over Olympia Springs in Bath County, Kentucky. It's a little bit of uh, halfway between Moorhead and Winchester. Now, according to a New York Times article, again, this is coming from Beck Crew's article in Scientific American. According to a New York Times article published the following week, the phenomenon occurred right nearby the house of one Alan Crouch, whose wife was outside making soap when it happened. The meat, which looked like beef, fell all around her. The sky was perfectly clear at the time, and she said it fell like large snowflakes. If this was a documentary, according to the Scientific American article, the words meat shower would appear on screen right now with trickles of little red meat flakes falling behind. A few select flakes would fall in front of the words for effect. Back to the back to the main part of the article. Back at the Crouch residence, a Mr. Harrison Gill, whose veracity was described by the New York Times as unquestionable, visited the day after the alleged flesh falls and noted the presence of meat sticking out of the fences and scattered across the ground. At least one of the hunks measured 10 centimeters squared, but most were 5 centimeters by 5 centimeters. They were apparently fresh when they fell, but having been left out all night, they were now spoiled and dry. Two unidentified gentlemen turned up to taste the meat rain. Why? Why would you want to do that? But they did, and declared that it had the flavor of either venison or mutton. The first explanation came three months later, when someone called Leopold Brandis received and analyzed some of the specimens that had been preserved in glycerin. He announced that the meat was not actually meat at all. At least we have a proper explanation of this much-talked-of phenomenon, it was reported in Scientific American that year. It has been comparatively easy to identify the substance and to fix its status. The Kentucky Wonder is no more or less than Gnostic. A type of cyanobacteria that forms colonies surrounded by a protective gelatinous envelope, Gnostic is known to swell up into a translucent, jelly-like mass whenever it rains. Because it's so inconspicuous when dry, for many years people believed Gnostic to float on the breeze until it rained, which caused it to fall from the sky like hail. Colorful nicknames such as star jelly, witch's butter, and star slubber were even thrown around. Brandeis identified the Kentucky Gnostic as belonging to the species Gnostic Cranium, which he described as flesh-colored in the sanitarian. But really, it honestly looks like the color of seaweed. It tastes like a frog or spring chicken legs, he said, and it had ballooned and fallen upon the Crouch residence when it rained. But wait a minute. What rain? The Crouches reported that it was a perfectly clear night. There was no rain. So what was it? Well, later on, well, you know, other people have taken uh, up the cause of trying to figure out what exactly was this stuff that fell from the sky. Um, Brandeis, he had given a couple of mystery meat samples to experienced histologist and president of the Newark Scientific Association, Dr. A. Mead Edwards, who said it was likely the lung tissue of a human infant or a horse. <clears throat> now, wait a second. It's likely the lung tissue of a human infant or a horse. I would hate to be the guys who said that it tasted like mutton at this point. My goodness. Another histologist, Dr. J.W.S. Arnold, studied the specimens and agreed that they consisted of some kind of animal cartilage and lung tissue. Now, eventually, seven samples were examined by several scientists who confirmed two to be lung tissue, three to be muscular tissue, and two were said to be made of cartilage. So how did they come to be involved in the infamous Kentucky shower of flesh? 
Enter the man with the best explanation so far for the shower of quivering flesh that we're probably ever going to get, Dr. L.D. Kastenbein, who wrote in an 1876 edition of the Louisville Medical News that it was quite literally a coordinated bout of projectile vulture vomit. I'll say it again. Projectile vulture vomit. Having obtained a sample of his own, Kastenbein set fire to it and observed that it smelt distinctly of rancid mutton. The only plausible theory explanatory of this anomalous shower appears to be that, as suggested by the old Ohio farmer, the disgorgement of some vultures that were sailing over the spot from their immense height, the particles were scattered by the prevailing wind over the ground, he wrote. The variety of tissue discovered, muscular, connective, fatty, structuralist, etc., can be explained only by this theory. Two species of vulture are found in Kentucky, the black vulture and the turkey vulture, both of which are known to be uh, both of which are known to projectile vomit their stomach contents away as either a defense mechanism or to make themselves light enough for flight. Now folks, I don't know. <laughs> either way, Vultures projectile vomiting meat, which people later sampled. Uh, I, I find that better than it being a infant human meat, but it's still very, very strange. Now, Kentucky's also had its fair share of frog showers where frogs fell from the sky. Or, you know, just strange things. There's always something falling from the sky in Kentucky. Well, I hope this has been a lighter bit of Elliot's articles. We'll look into some more stuff next week. As always, stay vigilant, dear listeners. Elliot, out. Take a lighter look into the darker side of the world. Join Elliot, Charity, and Beagle as they jump into the dark abyss of hauntings, fables, UFOs, and beyond. The Spooky Family Podcast. You can find them where you listen to quality podcasts. (laughs) Goose and Dirty Dan. Give the guys a break. They're not that bright. (laughs) And welcome back to Here to Chew Bubblegum. Hello, and we're back. We hope you enjoyed the break. Uh, we're going to get started in segment one here, guys. And uh, I'm going to talk briefly about, uh, and uh, hopefully this does not happen, uh, but NASA announced a dangerous asteroid could hit our planet in 2022. The asteroid known as JF-1 could be bad news for humanity if it hits Earth this year, and it has that potential. Uh, force of 15 Hiroshima bombs, says NASA officials. NASA has been regularly warning the public about uh, potentially dangerous space rocks, and this is definitely a big one. The American Space Agency has released more details of the asteroid that's near Earth, and it it is around 420 feet across. Uh, Even though the chances are small, NASA claims that it still may strike our planet on May 6th, 2022 the probability again is low however uh this asteroid is the size of the great pyramid uh if it hits our planet it would come with a force of 230 kilotons and if it splashes down in a remote part of the pacific ocean that would cause major tsunamis and a nuclear winter which could seriously impede life as we know it So, the JF-1 has been flagged for close observation by NASA, and they are monitoring that asteroid as we speak. What's your guys' thoughts on that? (laughs) Yeah, I know. What a way to start off segment one, doom and gloom, right? Well, um, popular or unpopular opinion, let's just position the Earth to, you know, a certain area of the world and fix a screw-up from uh, end of August, and that'll take care of all that problem. Um, moving on to the real thought is, uh, nope. See my first answer. (laughs) (laughs) At least we still have Cinco de Mayo. There you go. That's all I care about. There you go. Simon, what's your thoughts on that? Uh, I don't think Asher will hit us and, uh, hopefully it does, man. 
so we can well i mean we already got a lot of stuff going on right now in this country mm-hmm. that is crazy so i mean well you know and we and we still have bruce willis so we still have a chance i mean you know and, and if it's a nuclear winter i'm i'm all with woody harrelson i got a stockpile of twinkies so well there you go uh let's see not, uh, not not to forget though yes not to forget that if it's a nuclear winter, maybe the flu would magically come back. Anyway, I digress. Okay. Uh, Simon, what do you have for us this week? All right. This is a uh, MUFON report out of Jack Horn, Kentucky, in Letcher County, Kentucky. And this was February the 3rd of 2021. And it says a triangle-shaped craft lights at each other. Blinking red light in the center sounded similar, but not exactly like a jet on approach. Flew low and slow compared to jets. Now, see, I hadn't heard about that, and that's from February 3rd, 2021. Yep. I had not heard about that, but I think that is around the time last year that me and Cronkite saw three different triangle shapes. Uh, I'm pretty sure it, it was around that time when we saw them, you know, uh, in uh, Pikeville. I was on... I was in town. He was on the outskirts. We were in different positions, and he called me. He's like, hey, look at the sky, and I... It was, it was around that time. So and that I'll have to go back and check that out. That's very fascinating. If anybody's listening, if you saw that uh, last year, February 3rd, 2021, please contact us at Here to Chew Bubblegum, 606-373-3396. Dirty Dan, moving on to you, big guy. I predict that you're going to talk about NASA's Mars rover. Am I correct? I mean, kind of. Okay. So uh, NASA has decided to perform an unusual maneuver with its Mars rover, and here's why. NASA has revealed its plan for dislodging some pebbles, yes, pebbles, that are preventing the rover from correctly storing rock samples. NASA took to its blog to reveal its big plans for removing the unwanted Martian pebbles located in a Mars rover's bit carousel, the place where samples are stored. Jennifer Trosper, the project manager at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, has taken to the NASA Science Mars website to outline the agency's plan for removing the debris. Lopez writes that the team has performed a diligent analysis of the carousel and the ground located directly beneath Perseverance and has sent commands to the rover on January 12th that instruct Perseverance to point the tube 261 at the floor and release its contents. Additionally, Lopez writes that the team has also sent up instructions that will command Perseverance to perform two rotation tests of the bit carousel. Both the smaller and the larger test will commence over the weekend. The team has instructed the rover to take under chassis images and expect that the data from the tests and images will arrive on Earth by January 18th. With this below chassis preliminary imaging in hand, the team embarked on a maneuver with our robotic arm I never imagined we would perform, ever. Simply put, we are returning the remaining contents of sample tube 261, our latest cord rock sample, back to its planet of origin. Although this scenario was never designed or planned uh, for prior to launch, it turns out dumping a core from an open tube is a fairly straightforward process, at least during Earth testing. We sent commands up yesterday, and later on today, the rover's robotic arm will simply point the open end of the sample tube toward the surface of Mars and let gravity do the rest. I imagine your next question is, Why are you dumping out the contents of the sample tube? The answer is that, at present, we are not certain how much cord rock continues to reside in tube 61. And while this rock will never make my holiday card list, the science team really seems to like it. So if our plans go well with our pebble mitigation, we may very well (laughs) attempt to core Issel, the rock from which this sample was taken again. So, uh, no news on the images actually coming back on the 18th. Yeah. Um, and it's pretty sad that the updating and breaking news from NASA is that they're commanding their rover to take a dump. <laughs> <laughs> dump the pebbles. You know, I mean. Pebble mitigation. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was cracking up at that pebble mitigation. How do you uh, think I felt reading it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you should encounter that. I mean, looks like they would have prepared this rover to just overcome that you know i mean have you guys saw the meme floating around on social media that's got a picture of the rover 
And uh, then you can see somebody shadow like taking a picture of the rover, and it's like we're all good here. So the new the NASA Mars rover. I mean, I can tell you from uh, the preliminary under chassis pictures of the pebble mitigation, M um, and M's are bigger. Really? So yeah. it's oh, oh, oh. so well. I, just, I mean, like like wow. mini M and M's. Wow, mini M and M's. Wow, are bigger than the pebble that this is caught on. Yes. Wow, that's just it's a sad, sad world that we live in. Very sad. Uh, We're going to step away and take a break. Uh, You will hear part two of the mysterious Appalachian Mountains with Seth Thambergy. And uh, when we come back, we'll close everything out. And uh, thank you very much for tuning in and sticking with us. You're listening to Here to Chew Bubblegum. We'll be back in just a moment. Right, right. Yeah, but yeah, cave systems, yeah, I I totally believe that these things actually run through caves. I mean... I think it's a very awesome way, you know, clever way to get away from everybody. And, um, you know, they go in and out of those caves enough. They know their way, way through them. So I think they totally survive and thrive through using these cave systems to get from one point to another. So that's a very fascinating uh, detail that they he, he came out of the cave. Um, and you said you, you think it was between seven and nine feet probably? Yeah, uh, ranging from probably five to nine feet. You know, I I could say it could be five feet because a five-foot-tall dog standing up is still a huge beast. But (laughs) I'd say, uh, yeah, probably probably seven to nine. But my buddy said five-foot-five, so I can't throw that uh, totally out the window. But this thing was hulking and wide, more wide and strong with posture than uh, than height. Yeah, that's uh, pretty fascinating. A lot of details you hear about dog man, usually they're more of an athletic build and um, extremely fast, of course. But uh, and then you said uh, somebody was hearing mock owl calls. Is that right? Yeah, which definitely makes me start to think, whoa, is this a gugway? You know, this could have been a Sasquatch with maybe just a little bit of a snout. Uh, because exactly. I didn't see enough in the darkness to clarify if it's Bigfoot or Dogman, but in my and we never heard the, we never heard the phrase Dogman back in that day. It was always Wolfman. Sure. But my buddies, they had the daytime encounter, and they they said Wolfman. They never said you know they mentioned Sasquatch years later and said oh it could have been Sasquatch, but it was always the Wolfman uh, from the very start. So uh, that could have something to do with me thinking maybe one way than the other, but uh, it just had that lycanthrope vibe to it now that I look back and hear so many more stories. Yeah, did they mention anything what the legs might have looked like? Uh, no, uh, I think it was too dark. Uh, all, I, right. all I could see is from, you know, it's high chest upward. Sure. It, it's played its, It played the darkness very well. Yeah, I think they do that very well, for sure. <laughs> they fool a lot of people. I, who knows how many times you walk by them walking through the woods and not even knowing they're there. It's a uh, pretty amazing creatures for sure. Definitely. Yeah, I tried to reach out to a lot more neighbors after that, but a lot of people moved uh, from that area. So I started to think maybe that had something to do with it because uh, most places, most nice residential uh, neighborhoods, or if you have nice acreage, you're going to stay there for a while. But uh, those people didn't stay long. And maybe maybe that was just the culture of that, or maybe it had something to do with what was in those woods. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me about if it was something to do with what was in the woods. <laughs> Heard that million, story many exactly. times. And and a caves man, they link Ohio, Kentucky, Seth, and then you in Indiana, man. The mammoth caves probably go all the way to the aquifer in the Middle Earth. So who knows what really resides out there? Uh, but I spent a lot of time uh, when I was in Indiana exploring near Squire Boone Caverns. Have you ever been there? I've never been there. No, we used to go Very to cool some place. caves called Buckner's Cave and stuff down southern Indiana. But I haven't heard of the other one that you just mentioned. Yeah, Squire Boone Caverns. That's where Daniel Boone's brother is actually buried at. And uh, it has many other paranormal stories and, uh, you know, tales of ghouls and gremlins and probably homeless camps just like this one leads back to but yes it's never you never know how close they are man one of my favorite uh stories of recent 
is my buddy Flat Rock Booger. Uh, he has a bunch of security camera footage uh, of these creatures coming onto his property, banging onto his house, even opening up his door. And most of the time they appear as shadows and weird lights, but man, he's captured some uh, strange photographs as well uh, at night and during the day. And that is in Evergreen, Alabama, where they made a documentary called The Town That Loved Bigfoot. Wow. It is yeah, pretty it seems cool. Like every, seems like every state has a a Bigfoot story nowadays. It's pretty amazing. 100%. Alabama's got a few, man. They got the boogers. They got the white thing. They have the mobile wolf woman, which is a female werewolf who's ultra curvy. And then they also have Huggin' Molly, which is on the Abbeville welcome sign. Uh, it says home of Huggin' Molly. And she's like eight feet tall and she'll squeeze you as hard as she can until your bones break and she screeches into your ear till you go deaf or insane. And uh, you can't get caught after dark over there. Uh, it's a really cool spot. But man, just <laughs> everywhere down here in the South has, you know, stained soil and some kind of curse to it. So you have to either break free or purify yourself enough and pay your respects to it. And of course, my favorite story from this area is the, the one, the Ochizi Pond Wild Man. And that is the one that was captured in the 1800s uh, in the Ochizi Pond Swamp after it was harassing women and children. Native American gatherers and Civil War veterans teamed together and surrounded this thing in the swamp, surrounded it on an island capture it and then sent it to the capital and then the governor said oh no way sent it to Chattahoochee Hospital which my good friend he is the IT guy there and he actually lives on campus so I spend a lot of nights there photographing and uh, videotaping and there's an uh, underground base and underground bunkers and it gets really deep and that's where the Ochizi Pond Wild Man is buried after three years of experimentation they say he passed away and then they buried him with a bunch of Native Americans and uh, then they built a building on top of him. Other people say he's in a solo grave over by the abandoned golf course. So it's super interesting uh, to actually be in that area. And then in modern times, it's very close to Torreya State Park, where Stacy Brown filmed the skunk ape on, you know, and well, he filmed it with his dad, but it was all over Animal Planet, Discovery Channel, and a bunch of other things. And then that has really, you know, brought many people to this area. And then Donnie Miller at a face-to-face encounter. I've had boulders thrown behind me. I recorded something on my GoPro wading through a creek below us on the hillside, just the audio of it, but still something very massive. And uh, that was one of the more scared times I've been in the swamp. But just every day and uh, every night is something new here because even on my drive home from work, I go past where, one of my Native American friends witnessed a dog man or a werewolf turn from seven feet to 30 feet tall, taller than the treetops. The interview is pretty crazy. Wow. Uh, so I'm, I'm going towards shapeshifter and skinwalker or whatever crazy uh, mythological word that fits into the dog man legend with that story. But yeah, it gets really cool. So even when I'm, you know, a little bummed in the morning driving to work, I still have things to look out for. And then on my free days, I'm finding bottles and relics and arrowheads and Native American pottery and Sasquatch footprints, you know, so that's what it's all about. Yeah, I I feel you there, man. That's basically what we do. We go out and explore everything. We we hunt for treasure in southern Indiana. And and of course, southern Indiana is also some good Bigfoot sightings down in there that region, too. So. We spent a lot of time in Southern Indiana for sure, uh, looking around and, and exploring different, you know, lost areas for say, you know, it's a lot of fun. 100%. And the Ohio river of course goes into Indiana as well. Uh, and they are known for the green clawed beast mantis man, their own type of serpents. And of course the God quasi Koto Mothman, And, uh, it always goes back to Mothman and, you know, the Pensacola serpent and the Lake Erie monster. And of course, Nessie, man, it all was was in our childhood uh, for a reason. And I feel like we've all been given our paths to kind of spread awareness and hopefully uh, get some more evidence, you know, for the for this movement. I just got selected for the Bigfoot Odyssey 168, which I have to spend 168 hours straight in the South Florida swamps uh, with a research team. So that's going to be super cool. I cannot wait. I- I just watched a show on 
on that exact same thing down in Florida. Awesome. Yes. I am very, that was an awesome show. Uh, the way they showed the, the faces in the trees and what was actually going on with the reflections. Amazing. It, it makes sense. It totally makes sense. A hundred percent, man. I definitely appreciate you watching that. I wasn't part of that first expedition, but I am going to be part of the sequel. Uh, so you're going to have some, some dog in the fight. You know, I'm very excited right for on. that. And uh, yes, those pictures are groundbreaking. I've shared a few of them. Uh, they reflect green because the swamp is green. And that just shows you that there are incredible photographs out there. I, I post great photographs every single day uh, on my TikTok and awesome uh, footage. You know, some people uh, might not agree that some are authentic. All I'm doing is sharing hundreds of uh, possible evidence. And, that, and then I just let the conversa conversation uh, develop and transcend from there. Uh, but all we can do is spread awareness just so there's less Henry McCabe's, Colin Finnerty's, Jared Adadero's, Dennis Martin's, Albert Osmond, all the people that have been taken by Sasquatch. Some make it back, you know, some don't. Yeah, Absolutely. the Albert Osmond story, that's a fascinating story. So much detail. Just it's I, I listen to it over and over again. It's uh really amazing. But what really got me on those pictures down in Florida was it was basically the same face in different locations. And it, it just totally you could totally see it after you, you made you made sense of it. The reflection and the color of their skin uh just made them blend in so well. It was really, really amazing. A hundred percent. And that's what a lot of the photographs that I've taken. Uh, have showed too. So it one confirmed things for me, but it also just showed and opened up uh, the possibilities that they're not all going to look like Patty and great apes and uh, Marilyn Monroe posing for the picture. Uh, most of them are going to be blending in with the trees uh, looking like foliage and camouflage because that's how they've survived uh, for millions and billions of years. Exactly. Yeah. That's uh they have, you know, I have a, I don't, I don't know which way to go with it. I don't know. Um, are they a, a, a humanoid that just split off from us somewhere along the path and stayed primitive? And, you know, that's just really hard to, it's, it's really hard to wrap your mind around India, really, because uh, everybody has their own theory and they all have a good argument for their theory. So mm -hmm. who's right, who's wrong? Hopefully someday we'll find out, right? A million percent. And there's so many different ways to it. You know, like uh, the skunk ape that's taking photos of in Mayaka uh, definitely looks different than Patty in Bluff Creek. Uh, so maybe those are different subspecies or maybe they're totally different creatures uh, at all. But a lot of people are pushing the monkey or the monkey man. I can definitely say to you that these creatures can mate with human beings so they definitely have some kind of human hybrid in them uh, and as we know from homo erectus and all these dragon man skulls that there are other upright beings that existed uh together on this planet so uh who's to say they still aren't there out here now and it really doesn't stop at you know leprechauns fairies bigfoot i definitely think you know there was a mud flood mountains used to be alive jack and the beanstalks based on a true story the hobbit lord of the rings there's an earth below our feet there's an earth up in the sky as well and heaven is a real physical place 73 miles up so i'm closer to heaven than i am to you guys and that's pretty powerful uh that we can connect like that and still be in touch in the real world but uh, a lot of things have gotten so blurry in this existence and people are living so backwards that I just want to, you know, share hope and share positivity and encourage people to get outside and meet people and shake hands and smile and, you know, do it all. Like live how we used to, because that's what it's about. Absolutely. I, I, yeah, absolutely. I'd love to have some more conversations <laughs> with you, actually, Connor. A hundred percent, man. I will definitely uh, get your contact information. And uh, I know a lot of good, you know, Bigfoot podcasts as well that are always looking for guests. And uh, you definitely bring an interesting uh, aspect to it, man. And coming from Indiana, which is a neighbor state to my homeland, uh, it's, it's close to my heart. So that'd be very cool. And I have nothing but big plans uh, for the future, man. And if I come back to the Midwest, would definitely like to link up. And if all three of us can get together, and uh, you know, hit some caves. That would be that would be some magical times. Yeah, Absolutely. maybe get over in eastern Kentucky, over where Seth is. Seth is perfect place, definitely. 
I definitely appreciate you doing this, though, man. I appreciate you doing this, David, as well, being my co-host every week. And uh, this has been the Mysterious Appalachian Mountains. Y'all have a good night, and uh, God bless. I turned away when you needed me. I thought the fire would burn forever, you see. I made mistakes, but you've always pulled me through. You stood by me, that's why I'm standing by you. If I had shown you these feelings I felt inside. Just one more wish before you go I'd only want you to love me I only wish you love me Only forever Are you a horror movie fan? Yeah, I dig horror movies. Are you searching for a great internet horror talk radio show to listen to? Why sure, that sounds quite spiffy. Then you need to tune in to DeadPit.com. It's the original horror talk radio show. DeadPit is a show by the fans and for the fans. Uncensored and unbiased opinions are the goal of the show, giving fans honest reviews on new films and vintage classics of the horror genre. Make DeadPit.com your number one horror station destination. Hey everybody, it's John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bod Father. I have a new podcast entitled Beyond the Paranormal, which is on every Tuesday night on Beyond the Paranormal YouTube page and we'll be streaming shortly on our Facebook page as well. If you want some information on the paranormal and cryptids such as UFOs, Bigfoot, Dogman, come and check out Beyond the Paranormal every Tuesday on Beyond the Paranormal podcast YouTube site and also soon on our Facebook page. Keep checking back, folks. We're going to have a lot of great guests, a lot of great information. Have a good one. Welcome to Here to Chew Bubblegum with me, Dirty Dan, and uh, Goose. And Simon says, let's get back to the show. Well, thanks for mentioning me last, Simon. I really appreciate that, man. To be fair, he mentioned me, and you know, not everybody might know who me is, but he, he brought it back with seeing him last. Yes, yes, he did. And uh, I want to plug Dirty Dan. Dirty Dan did a special interview with Seth Ambergy, Seth's Daily Podcast. If you've not heard that, that is a great interview. Uh, I actually listened to it Monday morning um, when I was working out at the gym. So it, 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 it motivated me, it really did. Motivated you to be a better person, not like Dirty Dan. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. But that was a very, very great interview. Uh, we're coming I back. appreciate that, buddy. Oh, you're very welcome. We're going to close things out. And uh, Simon, we'll start with you this week. Is there anybody that you want to say anything to this week before we wrap things up? Uh, I just want to thank uh, Goose and Dirty Dan for having me as a co-host on here. I appreciate you guys. Well, we we love having you here, man. You're family. You are your family. Dirty Dan. And, and Simon, if you see Seth before I do, let him know I appreciate the opportunity to have an interview with him. I know he appreciates. I got to meet my, uh, my neighbor finally, and um, I'm going to have him on the show with us at some point because he's a, he's a career military guy. So he's uh, very open to talking about some stuff. Really? Oh, the, oh, that 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 will be great. Yes, please get him on. The um, you know the the catch is I have to go hunting with him. Oh no! <laughs> well, hey, you know <laughs> nothing wrong with that. So, no. So yeah, his uh, we'll call him Master Tony. Okay. And uh, he will he will be on the show sooner rather than later. Uh, don't know how much of it will be able to be played on the radio because he is um, right. He's a former well, military guy, so. a career military guy. So the so, filter is yeah. not quite there. Yes, yes. <laughs> so uh, and he's he's not former goose. He's actually still in. Oh, okay, okay. Which is why I said Master Tony. Now is is, <laughs> is he 
Um, so he's still in. Is he at the base that you live close to? Is that where he's stationed at? Yes and no. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha. He's a little special, and gotcha. he has done three long tours overseas. Okay. Okay. In two different areas. So, right. um, but he's got some some very good insight and intel and knowledge on some questions that he can answer that won't get him in trouble. Mm-hmm. Good. That we we look forward to that. Definitely look forward to that. Uh, the new Jackass movie coming out, Jackass Forever. Are you guys going to go watch that? Are you looking forward Honestly, to it? Honestly, that'll probably be the only movie I watch. You know, me and my son, we've actually... And the last movie we saw uh, before the pandemic was in Practical Jokers. That was the last one we saw. But we're actually going to go watch this one in theaters uh, as well. Uh, we actually saw another one. I can't think of the name of it, but... It must not have been that good because I only remember in Practical Jokers. But we're actually going to go see this one as well. And I think it comes I, out February 4th, the new Jack. I love movie. the Impractical Jokers. Oh, they're, they're, they're great. They're great. I was supposed to go see them right when the pandemic hit. Mm-hmm. And the show got canceled. Well, it was postponed. Turns out it was canceled. Ticketmaster, I'd like my money back, please. Thank you. <laughs> well, we, we, still, we had tickets to a... Um, uh, Cheryl Crow, uh, Chris Stapleton, and Willie Nelson concert in Lexington at the uh, football field at UK's football Rupp field. Arena? Yeah, no, oh, the, the football field. field. This was a stadium tour yeah. or an outdoor oh, event. Oh, yeah. 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 And uh, so they canceled it in April of 2020. They rescheduled it for April of 2021. It was canceled, and now it, I think it's on again uh, this coming April. So well, I can tell you because of that Omnicron, it's going to get canceled again. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Oh, well, thank you guys very much for tuning in and listening to us. Dirty Dan, please tell Absolutely. us about Carbon Capture Shield. Well, you just, you know, nope, 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 no, no, no. Okay. Uh, first, listeners, um, if you guys have a foundation or a company that is a good cause. It does it for the better of humanity, for our planet, just beneficial, and they're good people. And you want their message spread? Email Dirty Dan at here to chew bubble gum. Give me their name. Give me any contact info you have. I will reach out to them, and I will do my best to get them lined up for the end of our shows. Um, it's free. There is absolutely no responsibility or expectation to send anything or pay anything. Um, it is just us using our platform to be able to help spread the message more. Um, so with that being said, make sure you all check out Carbon Capture Shield. That's lawn.carboncaptureshield.com. Don't forget Till Valhalla Project. That's tillvalhallaproject.com. And go to YouTube, check out Adventures with Purpose or their website, adventureswithpurpose.com. Definitely, definitely. Well, very, very well said. Um, I want to thank Carlin for all the voiceover work. He never fails. Also, don't forget about the Midlife Crisis album out, available now on iTunes. And be sure to check out friends of our show and support uh, our friends that have their own show. I'm talking about CK and Uncle Bill over at DeadPit.com, Talk Junkie with Justin Perkins, Jordan and Brad of Down on the Holler, Seth Ambergie with Seth's Daily Podcast, Elliot Gertie and Beagle of SpookyFamilyPodcast.com, The Mountain Mysteries Podcast with our friend Chris Sloan, and if you're a fan of Cronkite, he now goes by Paranormal Trucker, and you can hear him, Snowman, and Large Marge over at Paranormal Trucker on YouTube. And don't forget about my friend john marshall who is now hosting a new show beyond the paranormal podcast uh, you can hear that every tuesday at 8 p.m live on facebook youtube and twitch and if you want to awaken more be sure to check out rebecca short on tiktok and twitch that'll do it for this week we'll see you next week and until then so long for now maybe i'm not leaving maybe i'm just going home You don't got to go home, but you can't stay here. Thanks for listening to Here to Chew Bubblegum. Tune in next time as we dive deeper into things the government doesn't want us to know.